And as you can see, I have here an, an, an issue because I have a, a class that's called Unix Time Helper. This class was uh, created by myself. Um, mm -hmm. The reason is that C Sharp don't like Unix timestamps at all. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes Unix timestamps. <laughs> but I suppose we have to live with them. <laughs> yeah. I would just create here and, uh, a small um, class. Called, if you really want to um, piss someone off, and they ask you if somebody asks you for the time, you give them a <laughs> Unix timestamp. <laughs> nah, I know, and this is a really geeky joke, but you try doing it to someone, you'll, you'll see the, the funny side of it. Yeah. The response will be priceless. <laughs> so, sorry, what's this? Uh, okay. okay, so we create a new class called a Unix Time um, Helper, and I will just copy my, my class I just used here. I just have some static calls here, for example, the date time to Unix timestamp and uh, um, the other way too, and with milliseconds. Mm -hmm. Because there are difference in the call, some needs a second um, timestamp, some need the millisecond timestamp. Mm -hmm. um, so here in that case, you see we have this Unix timestamp millisecond time because C sharp works with date time. Um, with the date time objects and for example the date from date from is the UI element um, the, on the GUI we can just click on it and see that's here date from um, has a selected date and we just get this data and compare if it's um, 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 bigger uh, than the migration date we just okay took there. Okay, that's just uh, so site information. You just um, get here 10 random items and normally our um, application should now work. We just create, uh, compile it and see if it has any errors. It works. Let's start. Wow, and see how like, that, that, that's impressive. We, I know you're adding in code on the fly on a live tutorial. Well, recorded, but still live in this moment tutorial. Yeah, uh, no, no errors. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so now we, let's see if it works. Uh, just click here on initialize. And as we can see, we already have now the functionality to get all the Darwins, all over 5,000 here in this combo box. And we can select one, for example, this one, add to the selection. We can delete this one uh, with all the, the possibilities. The last thing we have to do is now the get the data. Mm -hmm. And for this, we first need to add the library. So um, that's question. okay. You can just you, at this point you can just tell us what the library is, and in okay. the final source code, people people will know um, okay. based on the information we, we get. In Visual Studio, we have the possibility to get a new get packages that are available for everybody. Um, I just searched for a library that uh, has the possibility to show some nice graphic. Um, charts and for that I took the so-called live charts. I will search now for live charts. Um, oops. Uh, here we have the live charts and the VPF implementation of that. So oh, we great, just great. take here, the, we can choose here the, the version we would like to use. I will just install this one. It's free for everybody so you can just use it for free. And you could just use every other um, library if you like. So it's not necessary to use this specific library, mm -hmm. but I just choose the, the most common currently I know. So after adding that, we will see that we have this library here in our um, uh, in our uh, project. project. And we can already start using it. Um, for this, I just put now the information on the GUI to yeah. add that um, here, one moment. It has very, very uh, great, um, uh, many functionalities <laughs> and I will not go into every detail, but I- Yes, of course, now. So just add this here. We need to add a namespace first of all uh, to show it. Um, at the top, after the definition, you need to add an, a namespace to the library. And now we see there's already an, an uh, example how it could look like. Mm -hmm. And at the next step, we need to create some objects to fill uh, the data points here. 
For that, I will create at the first step a Xeris collection. Xeris collection is an list. You can of, just copy paste this here and yeah. then continue. No worries on you that. You see, that's yeah, that's just a library for for this um, for this component here. And the next step, I will now copy paste the whole data from the get data in event handler, mm -hmm. and we can now go step by step through what I've done here. So first of all, I clear the series collection. The series collection will now be filled with um, the quote data, or if you select, for example, the, the average, we will first build the average data and then fill the series collection. Mm -hmm. um, without going to every single detail, I will just uh, go to the most important stuff. It's here, the API client. I use this product, product name candle get. As you know, it's auto-generated, so that's not the name I decided to choose, but it's... Uh, <laughs> that's intuitive, so it represents the, the words from the endpoint. Yes, right. So, um, as you can see here um, in the description, we need the, the product name, the, the from and the to date, and if we want, we can choose a resolution we want to, to use here. In my case, I decided to use only the 1D data, so only per day I will get one candle data here. And we have already an auto-generated um, description, which was um, done by the, the AP, um, by the Swagger file. And we see here, find the candles for the product, search candles for the period selected of the product from and to our epoch uh, timestamps for the search. There are candles of type one minute and so on. Uh, so you can choose the, the um, the type you, you like to get. Mm -hmm. And in our case, as I explained, we will use the 1D data. And the type yeah. here is simply the resolution that you like return. Yes, to. right. And at the next step, we'll just create this chart values. And if you like to know, um, I'll just take a look. It's not too complicated. We just go through all this candle data we get now uh, based on the uh, on the radio button you clicked, we will just show the quotes, we will compare the Darwins or build the average. If you build the average, we just um, build an uh, additional um, array and uh, I have to add this one too, this mm -hmm. line series which will need it. And here you see if we click on build average, we'll just go through all the, the Darwin values and um, create an average value before we add it to the series collection. So uh, at the end, we just have a an, an list of all values, have a list of all labels. Of course, we want to know, if we go with our mouse above one of the points, we'll, we want to know um, which date uh, this data is displaying. That's why we have this uh, list of labels. And yeah, that's all of the magic. So if we start Brilliant. now and we have no problem, we will see that we now can initialize our data. Another and compile run after edit with no errors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even and though you're copy pasting, so, oh, no, no. even with copy no, pasting from a, from a prior solution, it's still like, come on, there's gotta be one <laughs> You must have missed a semicolon somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I forgot, uh, really, I forgot something. So the series collection has to be initialized. We just say here. Um, See, you did make clear, one error, finally. <laughs> yeah, it was not um, initialized. So uh, the application starts. We just create a series collection once. Uh, I created every time we click on the button. So I just created once with the line series. And now let's see if I don't forget something. Initialize again and compare Darwin's. And uh, <laughs> Fantastic. So what you guys have noticed just now, um, who's been watching throughout, I mean, this, this whole session has been done in several parts. So if people hopefully are following from the earlier parts of this uh, production, um, Paul has gone through the steps required uh, in terms of accessing data, gathering it, preparing it for delivery on in your application. And he's chosen C Sharp as the language, WPF as the framework, and uh, ju provide a justification for how to go about selecting, uh, well, how to go about creating the wrapper from the API, uh, leveraging Swagger. 
as well as um, using uh, freely available charting libraries such as live charts in this case directly yeah. uh, accessible from NuGet packages in uh, Visual Studio. That's right. And oh, I uh, hope this is the result. <laughs> yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any question regarding the API or C sharp development or what I've done here, or maybe some um, <laughs> things I could do better, just um, write me in a message. I'm uh, on the community board uh, too, or um, you can just. Uh, ZFX on the community forum, and we'll be putting these tutorials up in the community forum for, uh, for them to benefit everybody. If you have yes. any queries or questions, you can tag ZFX, that's X E D F X, on uh, the commu Darwin X community forum. And here, I'm sure we'll be more than happy to entertain your queries. But this is really exciting. Thank you so much for for bringing this to to Darwin X. This this whole development exercise, and it will be a whole ton of fun building a proper backtesting solution in C sharp, yeah. leveraging the Darwin API, and doing some cool things with it. Uh, we're going to progress from the build stage to the research phase too. So looking forward to that down the line as and when that surfaces. Okay. Thank you very much too. Brilliant. And Thanks looking, so much. And I'm looking forward to our back tester because we will come when we have all the data together and just writing our, our own back test based on all the, the provided powerful data we have for this asset plus from Darren X. So thank you very much. Thank you. Catch you next time. Yeah, see you.